just 20 days away from the start of Casey Anthony's murder trial. And today, I want to talk about one thing, her tattoo. Now, some people think it's important, some don't. What I want you to think about is when she got that tattoo. Take a look at it. All right, think about this, folks. Her daughter, Kaylee, allegedly hasn't been seen by anyone in more than two weeks yet. On July 2nd, Casey Anthony gets a tattoo that says Bella Vita. Bella Vita, right? I took Italian for eight years, folks. Here's the Italian-English translation. Bella means beautiful. Vita means life. So your daughter's reportedly been missing 17 days, and your life is beautiful? Joining me to talk about this, criminal defense attorney Drew Finling, family therapist Paul Hochmeyer, and Gene Casares, correspondent for In Session on our sister network, True TV. Gene, again, we come back to the timeline, and let's take a look at the timeline again to remind folks when all this is happening. June 16, 2008, George Anthony reports this is the last time he saw Kaylee alive. Then, July 2, 2008, Casey Anthony gets that Bella Vita tattoo over a cast iron tattoo. July 13th or 14th, Casey Anthony allegedly comes back to the tattoo shop to schedule an appointment for another tattoo. Never shows up, though, because on July 15th, Cindy Anthony calls 911 to report her granddaughter is missing. Gene, again, the timeline, it's what Casey Anthony was doing in that time period when Kaylee's missing. It's right in the middle of those 31 days. Now, standing alone, beautiful life. I mean, the morning of your daughter not knowing where she is, it's a beautiful life, so in tribute to her. Uh, but you've got all the party pictures that are circumvent around the getting of this tattoo, 4th of July. She was partying. That was a couple days later. So big challenges for the defense. Uh, Dr. Paul Hochmeyer with us. Uh, Paul, let me play for you. I went to that uh, tattoo parlor, and I spoke to Bobby, uh, Bobby Williams. He's the tattoo artist who actually put it on there and asked him a few questions about the whole idea of this Bella Vita tattoo. Take a listen. Was the tattoo her idea, the Bella Vita, right? Yes. And she came up with the design, or you worked on it together? No, I actually did the design for her. I mean, she did. She just the, did the words Bella Vita, though, mm -hmm. was that her idea or yes. your idea? That was hers. hers. Yes. Did you talk to her at all about it? Like, why are you getting Bella Vita? Any uh, story behind it? Not exactly. I mean, I already I knew it meant, like, beautiful life. But, right. You know, I've, I've done it, you know, several times, so. But for, for her, at that moment, did she say why now I'm getting a Bella Vita tattoo? No, not at all. All right. Dr. Hochmeyer, she's getting a Bella Vita tattoo, beautiful life. This is the time period, 17 days after Kaylee is last seen. Uh, what could it possibly mean? Because people usually get tattoos for a reason. Absolutely, and I think what's important here is not just what she said, but where she put it. I mean, one of the things that I know is she put it on her left shoulder, so she has to sort of be looking around and looking over her back, sort of there's this sense of paranoia about where she placed it. Um, I think that what it says is relevant in terms of beautiful life. It can also be interpreted to mean a life that's very indulgent and a life that's free of responsibility. Um, this is all very consistent with hedonistic personality, a person who could be suffering from sociopathy, which is a total focus on self-pleasure with a total disregard for the well-being and safety of other people and a, and a lack of any sense of guilt or remorse over what was done. Uh, Drew, I want you to take a listen uh, to more of my interview with the tattoo artist Bobby Williams because tattoos aren't free. Right? And we've heard all these stories about Casey Anthony running out of gas because, you know, because she doesn't have money to pay for gas, right? You hear stories about Casey Anthony stealing checks from people. Uh, take a listen to what Bobby Williams had to say about the payment for the Bella Vita tattoo. She's on the phone most of the time, so we didn't really hold much of a conversation. I mean, afterwards, you know, we had, you know, some pizza, and that was about it. Pizza? Mm hmm? What happened? I don't know, we just, we, it was lunch time for us, so we just ordered a pizza, you know, we just... And she ate some pizza with it? Yeah. She actually, she actually paid for the pizza, so... And that was the other thing I wanted to ask you about the tattoo. Mm -hmm. Do you remember how much it costs and how she paid for it? Um, the tattoo was, I believe it was like 65 She paid cash, yeah, credit card, no, it was cash. check? Cash. It was cash? Mm -hmm. 
She give you a tip? Yep, I remember it was 65. I think she gave me 100 bucks. So let me keep the change, so. Drew Finley, uh, Casey Anthony's daughter's missing, right? She, she gives the guy 100 bucks for the tattoo. She's buying pizza for everybody at the tattoo shop. Um, you know, I think about how this is going to sound inside a courtroom. Bobby Williams, the tattoo artist, is on the witness list. This does not sound good for Casey Anthony. Vinny, I want to thank you for the basket of lemons. Now I'm going to make some lemonade for you. That's your job. Go ahead. Hey, hey, let me tell you something. She, if you're defending this case, she may be a negligent parent. She may be an incompetent parent, but that does not make her a murderer. And if somebody that is just murdered, lemons. someone that has just murdered their child, and you've done cases like this when you prosecuted, they are 99.9% .9 of the time acting like everything other than she did. They are covering their checks. They are doing everything they can for citizenly to make sure it doesn't look like they're a murderer. They're not getting tattoos if you're a murderer. You're not buying pizza. You're laying low. What she does is shows that she may be incompetent. She may be negligent. She may be just ridiculous in the way that she's acting. But does it mean that she murdered her child? Does it mean that she secreted her dead child away? It absolutely does not. If I'm the defense, I am embracing this as the actions of somebody that is not a murderer. Now, the owner of the tattoo shop, also on the witness list, Danny uh, Calamarino, I want you to take a listen here as he describes whether or not uh, Casey showed any emotion that day that she came in. Because Danny Calamarino knew Kaylee, because Kaylee was in that tattoo shop pretty often. Uh, take a listen here as he describes what he remembers uh, of her demeanor that night and him asking about Kaylee. Her attitude that when she was in here the day before the, the big phone call was made was as if nothing happened. You know, I'm a father of four. I, she was in here with that kid so much, the first thing I asked her was, where was the kid at? And What'd without, she say? Without batting an eye, she went to Nanny. I'll bring her in with me Saturday when I come for my appointment. No shock, no twitch, no anything. No hesitation, none. Gene Casares, uh, you know, you, we come back down to the demeanor of Casey Anthony, and uh, this is another instance, this is another witness and in his interpretation of, uh, of someone he knew, but she's, she's lying. She's apparently lying about all this because she's saying, at that point, again, the baby, Kaylee, is with the nanny. Right, and statements like that can come into trial if this witness personally heard it and it's a statement against interest of Casey Anthony. So I think the prosecution is going to have a lot of that in their case to show the state of mind of Casey Anthony during these 31 days. All hey, right. Hey, Vinny, Vinny, if she were sweating and if she were twitching, would we be talking about it right now? You bet we'd be talking about it right now. So no matter what she does in that scenario, we're talking about it, except what she's not doing is acting like somebody looking over their shoulder because they just committed murder. All right, I'll take that glass of lemonade. Good job. <laughs> All right, we're going to talk more about this. And here's another issue I want to talk about. What type of mother was Casey Anthony? Some would argue what type of mother takes her daughter to a tattoo shop. Yet at that tattoo shop, everyone describes her as such a loving mother. Want your calls on this one. That's that was the scariest part of it all. Why? Because she was a very attentive mother. She was? Yeah. Well, give me an example. Um, I mean, if people were getting tattooed and she was hanging out, she'd be on the couch, you know, playing with the kid and, you know, feeding her, doing whatever she was doing with her. And she was coming in here for years, so we saw that kid go from, you know, almost infant to toddler. Always very attentive. And loving? Very. 